the 10 reps of doom of course whenever you have an irritation or an injury you can't help but think about it so everything is made worse so when do you when when is the time right to abandon something uh, and it was almost a seminal moment for me because that was when i got first introduced to like things like social media foo fighters meets Monster Magnet with all time signatures. Oh, now they're cutting the grass. Are you kidding me? Hello there, chaps and ladies. And hello there, chaps and chapettes. Oh, hello there. Hello, and welcome to my very first vlog. So I thought it would be cool to um, do some of those more informal videos and talk a little bit about things that I've been working on and share some tips and tricks which you might find useful. And when I talk about tricks, I mean like, you know, little musical things that I like to do. I'm not going to be pulling anything out of a hat. I'm not a wizard, Hagrid, I'm just Harry. Not in this very first vlog. Maybe I'll learn that down the line and I can add that to my uh, uh, list of unnecessary skills. But before I move on, how good is this tank? I uh, started this project in, uh, well, last August and uh, well, it was between that or a TV, and I'm um, pretty glad I chose to build this tank. It's super cool, helps me relax. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the autofocus. I've literally never used this camera with autofocus. The Lumix do get a bad rap about the autofocus, but it seems to be okay so far. So anyway, let's head over to my cave and uh, we'll get to talk some things music. So welcome to my little creative cave. I was wondering what to talk about on this first vlog. I thought I'd talk about a few things that I've been dealing with in the last, you know, year or so. And one of them is the uh, challenges and the benefits of doing things in-house. So, as some of you might know, I have completed a second record, which is uh, currently being mixed. I, I've been dealing with a little health thing at the moment, which has sort of put a bit of a pause on things. I will elaborate on that a little bit later, because I think you might find some stuff useful. Uh, but... Um, you know, the main reason why this project, which has been recorded and written, you know, so long ago, has taken that long to be finished, is mainly this guy, me. And I think this is a, a, a challenge with doing things in-house. And what I mean by in-house is basically a situation which there's no time clock apart from the deadline that you set yourself that will force you to have to hand in something. A non-in-house scenario might be you going into a, a studio where you, you pay a lot of money uh, per hour and you know you got a set amount of days and you gotta get a get a recording or get a mix done. So this album, things have been done a little bit differently. Uh, the drums were recorded by the amazing Darby Todd, um, who's out with Devin Townsend. They were recorded in a studio and some other instru instruments like the upright bass and, and oud and stuff were recorded in studios, but uh, for the most part, the guitars, vocals, bass uh, were done in this creative cave. And, and so did the, did I say the vocals? Yes, the vocals as well. I got the isovox right there. And the mix has been undertaken by uh, Billy Crab, who's also my cousin. Uh, so he's, he's exercising extra tolerance with my little uh, changes and stuff. So in a nutshell, it's, you know, it's very easy to uh, reflect and, 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 and change things, right? Uh, which means that uh, projects can take uh, a, a little bit longer or a lot longer to get completed. Of course, that sometimes is a good thing because, and I, I do feel that, um, you know, for much of the, of, of the, ch you know, much of the changes that I, I, I've made in, in the record, even some of them taking place deep into the mixing process, they were for the better. Uh, but it's still something that, you know, you kind of have to wrestle with yourself. When do you say that something is finished? Is something ever really finished? Uh, there was a great quote uh, which I heard by somebody which I can't recall. I'm sorry. I will try and put credits if if I if I if I if I see who said this. A project is not really finished. It's just abandoned. You know. So when do you, when when is the time right to abandon something? Um, I don't know. I, I feel that by doing this more and more, and by this I, I mean like you know getting songs done and. And putting out records, I'm, I, I might, um, you know, figure this out. I think that sometimes uh, that's why a, a, a producer might, might be a might be a good a good a good idea. 
it's, it gives you that outside perspective which you might not have when you're in the thick of it i haven't had a producer for this record but i do have a select group of people who i trust and i send stuff over and i might just play you a little sneak peek later okay but that will have to stay between us okay so the other thing that i've been working on is is like uh, an educational series uh which uh, i'm currently trying to put together uh which really uh, breaks down some of my older songs and aside from breaking down the parts and stuff it's it is sort of also explaining uh the concept behind uh, why guitar part was written that way and how it works with the vocals and how it works, you know, how it works with the drums. So it basically takes guitar and sees it in a in a hundred purely song driven um, universe. I just wanted to do something that uh, was so the guitar is part of a collective, you know, as part of a as part of a song. And you know that meant actually going back and learning parts, which I haven't played for 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 some time. And I'm also putting together a full band, so I'm, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and so it, you know, it is, it is quite it's quite useful that I I go over that stuff. So what I thought I would do is take you a little bit through my practicing habits for that particular project. And this is my way of doing things. You might have a different approach, but hopefully you can pick up some some cool tips. So uh, I will set up and I will see you in a momento. So a really important thing is to practice playing stood up. I know this might seem like trivial or whatever, but uh, believe me, I found out the hard way. When I did the guitar idol, which is, seems now like an eternity ago, I, I was just playing stood up and then when it was time to get up on stage and play, it was pretty horrendous. I look like a fool last night. So I always try to play stood up because of course that's how I'm going to play when I go on stage, right? So uh, this is quite important and I'm not, you know, I'm not someone who gigs like three, four times a week. So I don't have that much of a connection with that way of playing, you know. I'll only gig when I do some opening slots or when I put on my own shows. So uh, it's important to maintain that and keep the guitar at a level that you're going to have when you play live. If you're a true rock and roller and you, like Nuna and you're going to have your guitar up to your knees, uh, practice with the guitar up to your knees. So at the moment I'm working on the opening for the solo for the song Follow Me. Follow Me is a favorite song of mine and it is a you know, crowd favorite whenever I, I, I play it in front of people. And um, I'm working on the solo, the opening line for the solo. Uh, this is quite a complex piece. And for the opening, I wanted something really explosive. I basically just, uh, you know, ripped off Guthrie. Sorry, Guthrie, I love you, man. Again, I haven't played the, this this thing for a long time. So whenever I revisit things, I always try to start from a place of complete comfort. It's almost like you're re-imprinting re the information in a much more effective way so that you can actually get it more settled in when, when you play. The other thing is, you know, whenever you play live, there's gonna be various situations that are not optimal. Your sound might not be ideal, the stage might be wobbly or whatever. So the more comfortable you are with what it is that you have to play, uh, the better, you know, because that means you can just be in that moment without worrying about uh, the, the what, it, what should be a trivial thing. You know, you should just be able to play your, your piece, um, you know, with ease in most scenarios. So, uh, the line goes something like that. Uh, and when I play it, I can feel that it's a little bit more hard work than it should. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, at, I believe the tempo is 76 at 5.8. So I'm gonna start at a comfortable place at 40 and then I'm gonna build it up from there. Let's get to work. And so what I'll do is I'll do this for like 20, 30 reps. I like to deal with reps because you can. it's easier to, to quantify how many reps you do. If I say I'll play it for five minutes or something, I'd rather to say okay, I'll do 20 reps or something. And when it starts feeling comfortable, I'm gonna go up by increments of five uh, bits per minute. So now I'll try it at 45. And that's basically how I'm gonna work my way up until the final tempo. And whenever I've hit the final tempo, 
I will try, I'll do, I'll, I'll call it the 10 reps of doom. He's out of control. Actually, don't call it like that. I just came up with this name. But basically, I'm going to try and play 10 reps throughout. Uh, super easy, super clean. If I fail on one rep, I'm going to have to start the reps again. If I do 10 reps and they're all impeccable or close to that, I'll know that I am ready to rock. <laughs> One, two, three, one, two. Three. Four. Five. Six, I guess. So that is basically how I like to revisit like um, old parts that I haven't played for some time. Uh, I mean, I've played the, the you know I've played the the, the song before, but uh, you know the, for the past year and a half I've been going out sort of solo, so electric and and and, and vocals. I refuse to hold on. I do tend to just improvise and, and, and sort of make stuff up and try to have a more of a sort of core melody kind of approach, which, you know, wouldn't work with, with that kind of um, that kind of solo. So yeah, I, I basically like to start from a place of complete comfort where I can really listen to what I'm doing and, and be able to monitor if it sounds good, timing's good, articulation is good and everything. And so once I got that piece, then I, I put it together with the, the next part and then that becomes a bigger piece. And, and that's how I sort of go about um, working on parts, especially parts that are, you know, some somewhat challenging, which uh, this is, at least for me. Um, so yeah, I hope this is helpful. So I did tell you I was going to give you a sneaky peek from uh, one of the songs of the album. Surprise! So are you ready? Scream for me, YouTube. Jalapeno! Let's play something. I won't play your chorus because that's like, the, you know, chorus is like the big bit. I want you to listen to it when it's like. I want you to listen to it proper, done. But I'll play you like a cool verse. This is one of my favorite songs. So this is a bit like Foo Fighters meets Monster Magnet with odd time signatures uh, and a, like a one and a half minute solo in the end, which I won't play for this video. I'll just give you five seconds. All right, let's listen. A key stock and ignition. So I hope you liked it. Um, I'm, I can't wait for you to check it out. Uh, in the meantime, you can check my previous works on Spotify or, or Deezer or Bandcamp. Bandcamp's good because uh, you know it means that I can at least get some of the money and put them on my Bitcoin fund and become a, a billionaire tycoon. So remember, I told you I've been dealing with a little bit of a health issue, which has been negating uh, some aspects of of of, of my. Um, of my life, like as being present in mixing sessions, rehearsing and playing, sort of performing and stuff. So basically about a month and a half ago, I went to a rock show by an amazing band, The Warning, really great rock trio. And after that, I've been experiencing sort of extreme sensitivity to like snappy sounds and, and moderate loudness, which wouldn't be an issue before. I mean, I was never really a fan of like loud music in general, and I was always somehow sensitive, but that's been amplified. I have been to an, a, an an audiologist, a specialist who looked at my ears and said that on paper everything seems fine, but just to try and tame me down and give them a rest and, and see how that goes. And you know, throughout the years I've dealt with a plethora of injuries from RSI to, you know, with things with my wrists. I have to say that this has been the worst uh, so far because of, of the fact that it's in your head. Of course, whenever you have an irritation or an injury, you can't help but think about it, so everything is made worse because you're just aware of it. I've been very careful and I'm hoping that it will get better. Um, I'm sure it will. Uh, but basically, uh, all this sort of this moment have made me realize something about my relationship with silence. I actually realized that for most of my days, even when I'm not working on a mix or writing or something, 
there's always something, or, or at least until recently, there was always something playing in my ears, whether it be music or a podcast, anything that would prevent me from being fully in that moment in silence. I would always cook with something in my ears. I would always train listening to something, clean, everything apart from conversing with my partner and my friends and stuff, uh, or writing, apart from those few select moments, I would do everything while having something in my ears. It's been actually quite revealing trying to reprogram my, my mind to basically be present in silence. I truly feel that my ears were so saturated by that and the, the, the gig was just the icing on the cake, which made my body be like, okay, you know, that, that, that's it. You gotta sort of pull it back. I do really believe this has something to do with, you know, all, all this war on attention span with social media, you know, stuff on YouTube, you know, the fact that you can access all that stuff and they're just, you're inundated by those information. And of course it is, it's not all bad, you know, it's, I've made incredible interactions through the social media sort of thing, but I do also believe that it made me incapable of being present fully without the need of having something in the background to almost carry that moment. And I will tell you a really funny story uh, and it was almost a seminal moment for me because that was when I got first introduced to like things like social media. So I started playing guitar, I think it was 2006-ish, you know, I was about 15, 16 years old and uh, that was the time before social media. And uh, I clearly remember just being locked up in, in my attic for like 10 to 11 hours a day and this is no joke. Just just being absolute present with the metronome and practicing the same old patterns that I learned from rock discipline. And then go back to about five million. Until my fingers bled and just being completely, completely, oh, now they're cutting the grass. Are you kidding me? People cut the grass like every day here. Like, why are they feeding it? I hope you can still listen to me. Ah, oh, come on. I was getting to the good part. Ugh, that's better. So anyway, and I would be there for like hours and be completely, present and completely content with just being there and, and doing the same pattern for like 10, 11 hours. Then, I believe it was about 2007, I like got introduced to MySpace. And for myself, a kid who was in a small place in, in Greece, uh, that was really one of the places where I first started getting that sort of gratification from peers. You know, I remember putting videos up with like a my crappy whatever one megapixel camera. And getting comments from people all around the world. I mean, I was nothing amazing, but I guess for my age, I could play a little bit. And, and what started happening was my continuous study length would be fragmented because I would be like practicing for like 45 minutes to an hour in the attic. And then I'd be like, oh, I wonder if somebody left me a comment on MySpace. And I would go down to my, to my little bedroom and my computer, log in and check all the comments and feel really good about myself and maybe spend 20, 30 minutes talking to people and then go straight back up and I would do that thing. And then eventually what happened is I moved all my practice set up in my bedroom so that I can actually check my space as I'm practicing. And you know what's really funny? I never actually thought about this until this thing happened with, with my ears and I've had to confront just being in the moment in absolute silence and just be there fully not having to listen to a podcast to carry me through my daily tasks you know it's weird i felt a mixture of shame for for ending up like this and uh i guess it, it made me alarmed to that fact so uh, i have proceeded in 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 doing some changes in my lifestyle, removed all my social media from, from my phone. Uh, if I need to post a story, because I'm not sure if you can do this on from desktop, I'll just install Instagram, post a story or a reel promoting something, and then I'll just delete it straight away. Uh, I hope that this this is just um, a way of my, my body telling me to like really step back and, and be able to exist in the moment without feeling the need for some noise, you know, to, to, to distract me in the, in the background. All right, they're still cutting the grass for now, so we can be back in a better room. So uh, I guess the one thing I'd, I'd, I'd like to urge you, especially if you're, if you're like younger, and you probably will find that attack on attention span being experienced even more uh, pronouncedly because you know you were born at a time with 
Facebook, Instagram, and social media. It's just to um, learn to manage that. A, because you might end up, you know, damaging your body, but also, I don't know, I guess you, you don't wanna, you don't wanna feel that you were not really there. And on that jolly note, I liked, oh, the cutting again? Okay, well, we're at the end of the video. I don't care, they can cut, they can cut the whole bloody, well, no, don't cut the trees. Just trim your grass for once, please, and stop. Thank you for joining me in my first vlog. I hope you found some stuff interesting. Uh, I know much of it was me yapping about things, but again, maybe you found something of use. Uh, I'd urge you to uh, subscribe. You can go and listen to some of my music. Uh, I feel that by doing that, you might get to know me a little bit better. Also, don't forget, I just, well, not just, but a few months ago, I released my very first intimate concert film which took place in London and it was a jolly good night uh, so you might want to check it out what else I hope the autofocus was good I mean Lumix get a bad rep but the G9 with a new firmware I have to say well done guys nailed it you did a bloody good job you did uh, I'll see you in a few days I guess all right take care